The National Roller Coaster Museum is not what you think it is. This museum has been operating in Plainview, Texas since 2009, but there's a problem. This museum has never opened to the public. The only people allowed to visit are private groups, business partners, and friends and family of the owner. Now maybe it's just me, but this doesn't sound like a museum. This sounds more like a private collection created by a wealthy coaster enthusiast. But the National Roller Coaster Private Collection just doesn't have the same ring to it, I suppose. Let alone the non-profit status, tax write-offs, and all the donations from coaster enthusiast events. Even though this museum isn't open to the public, that doesn't stop them from gathering donations from the public, but I'll dive deeper into that later. There's a lot more to this story, stay tuned. The National Roller Coaster Museum and Archives was founded in 2009, and construction on a storage facility in Plainview, Texas began shortly after. The first building was created after funds were raised by members of the American Coaster Enthusiast Group. The second building was funded by the Gary and Linda Hayes family of Cliffs Amusement Park. The third building was a gift from the Knobles family to honor Barbara Knoble, and the fourth donated building houses the climate-controlled archives area. The museum's first ride vehicles were donated by Busch Gardens Williamsburg and Six Flags over Texas. Busch Gardens Williamsburg donated ride vehicles from their defunct roller coaster Big Bad Wolf. Six Flags over Texas donated ride vehicles from their defunct roller coaster the Texas Giant, which was undergoing extensive refurbishment by Rocky Mountain Construction and would reopen as the new Texas Giant. In 2020, the National Roller Coaster Museum completed construction on the Mark Moore Memorial Wing. Mark Moore was a founding board member of the National Roller Coaster Museum, who passed away in 2016. In 2017, the National Roller Coaster Museum announced that this new wing of the museum would feature a showroom with public access to select artifacts within the museum's collection. With the help of the Mark Moore Memorial Fundraiser, this goal seemed very possible. The fundraising campaign raised $322,490. For the new wing of the museum, this image is a virtual rendering of the new wing when it was announced in 2017. Now here's an image of the completed wing in 2020. It looks a little different, doesn't it? It doesn't quite live up to expectations created by that rendering, and there's still obviously no public access to any of the museum's artifacts. The National Roller Coaster Museum has an extensive collection of ride vehicles, ride signage, and other amusement artifacts. This collection includes, but is not limited to, ride vehicles from Big Bad Wolf from Busch Gardens Williamsburg, Mantis from Cedar Point, Disaster Transport from Cedar Point, Wildcat from Cedar Point, Matterhorn Bobsleds from Disneyland, Comet from Hershey Park, Super Duper Looper from Hershey Park, Volcano the Blast Coaster from King's Dominion, Montezuma's Revenge from Knott's Berry Farm, Apocalypse the Last Stand from Six Flags America, and the Texas Giant from Six Flags Over Texas. This is not the entirety of their collection, this is simply some of the more notable artifacts the National Roller Coaster Museum has acquired throughout the years. I would make a more detailed list of the National Roller Coaster Museum's collection, but unfortunately, their website only shows a small fraction of the items they've collected. You would think a museum would want to show off its collection, but unfortunately, the National Roller Coaster Museum makes it very difficult to view their collection, even through the internet. The National Roller Coaster Museum has featured exhibits at other parks and events outside of their facility in Plainview, Texas. These are the exhibits they list on their website in order. In 2012, the National Roller Coaster Museum presented an exhibit at Dollywood in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, which featured a small model of a roller coaster in some displays. In 2013, they presented a large poster at the IAPA Expo in Orlando, Florida that showed the timeline of the National Roller Coaster Museum. In 2014, the same timeline poster was displayed at the Adventure Dome at Circus Circus in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now maybe it's just me, but I'm not sure if I would classify these as exhibits. To me, they seem more like a middle school presentation, or something you would bring to show and tell. Not quite what I have in mind when I think of a museum exhibit, but that roller coaster model is still pretty cool. The worst part is that none of these exhibits feature any of the artifacts from the National Roller Coaster Museum's collection. It seems like the purpose of these exhibits isn't to exhibit any pieces of amusement park history, but rather promote the National Roller Coaster Museum. Now, it's still pretty reasonable for an organization to promote itself, but I find these exhibits quite lackluster and disappointing. The National Roller Coaster Museum has a board of directors with 11 members. The board includes Ed Hiller, CEO of Ride Entertainment, Secretary Carol Sanderson, a former president of the organization American Coaster Enthusiasts, Treasurer Hunter Novotny, an employee of Larson International, Chris Gray, co-founder of Skyline Attractions, former chairman Gary Slade, founder of Amusement Today, chairman Jeff Novotny, owner of Larson International, 
Robert Ulrich, President of the organization American Coaster Enthusiasts, Marketing Director Pete Owens, Vice President for Marketing and Communications for Dollywood, Historian Richard Munch, Founder and Former President of the organization American Coaster Enthusiasts, General Counsel Tom Sheehan, Member of the IAPA Committee, and Walt Bowser, Vice President of Binam Painting. Now, you might have noticed some patterns there, like most board members are either associated with American Coaster Enthusiasts or Larson International, but it gets even more interesting. An important detail that I left out of the history section is that the National Roller Coaster Museum is built on land owned by Larson International, the company known for their rides such as flying scooters, super loops, and drop towers. Now let's talk about who actually owns the museum. In my investigation to find the museum's owner, I did some digging and found the National Roller Coaster Museum's tax information. Now all of this information is available to the public, but for the safety and privacy of all parties involved, I will be blurring this information throughout this video. The registered office street address for the National Roller Coaster Museum is a house in Arlington, Texas. This is also the street address of Gary Slade. If that name sounds familiar, that's because he's one of the board members I just listed. Gary Slade is the founder of Amusement Today, a popular amusement publication, and is also one of the founding board members of the National Roller Coaster Museum. It makes a lot of sense for this trail to lead back to one of the founding board members. The National Roller Coaster Museum isn't owned by a single wealthy individual like I originally thought. Rather, it's owned by a group of industry representatives who have spent their lives in this industry and seem very passionate about their work. So if this isn't just some rich guy hoarding roller coaster trains and using it as a tax write-off, what's the problem? Well, I have quite a few problems with how the museum operates. Let's get into that. I find it slightly unethical for the museum to be collecting donations from the public when the public isn't even allowed to visit. They always claim their goal is to make the museum accessible to the public, but it's been 14 years. They only let in private groups, and if you ask them on Twitter when it's going to open, they'll just block you. This isn't even the worst problem though, in my eyes the biggest problem is their merchandise. You can find representatives from the National Roller Coaster Museum selling merchandise at enthusiast events like No Coaster Con, and it is outrageously overpriced. The worst offender is a 3D printed Schwarzkopf logo. They sell this for $50 while it only costs a couple cents to print it yourself. Schwarzkopf is a defunct company, so to my knowledge, their logo is under public domain. This isn't an intellectual property that the museum owns, they're just selling a different company's logo. Now I don't know how much money it takes to open a museum, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't take 14 years to open one. The way the museum operates and the way they seem so secretive about their collection, their operation, and their plans to open really gives me a bad impression of their organization. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who has this impression. In a surprising turn of events, Rocky Mountain Construction, also known as RMC, has announced that they are merging with Larson International. I was actually in the middle of editing this video when RMC dropped the surprise announcement on Twitter. For those who don't know, Rocky Mountain Construction is one of the fastest growing roller coaster manufacturers in the amusement industry. They're the ones who innovated hybrid roller coasters, and their specialty is their iBox track. Now it's not exactly clear what the merging of companies means just yet and what they have in store, but Rocky Mountain Construction did mention the National Roller Coaster Museum in their announcement. They stated that the National Roller Coaster Museum, alongside RMC and Larson, share a collective interest to contribute to the advancement, growth, and betterment of the amusement industry. Now this statement is really vague and could mean a lot of different things, but it does seem like the National Roller Coaster Museum has RMC's support. Does this mean RMC is going to help fund the National Roller Coaster Museum and speed along its opening? Or maybe donate some prototype ride vehicles, or wheels, or maybe even construct a prototype roller coaster at the National Roller Coaster Museum, like they did with the single rail Raptor model at their headquarters in Hayden, Idaho. Only time will tell. It's some pretty exciting news, and I can't wait to see what this means for the National Roller Coaster Museum. In summary, it seems to me like the National Roller Coaster Museum is owned and operated by many talented and passionate individuals within the amusement industry. But the shadiness of the museum and the poor business practices have ruined its reputation in my eyes. Now this video is not intended as an attack towards the National Roller Coaster Museum or any individuals mentioned within this video. I just wanted to share my findings about the National Roller Coaster Museum within this video. I truly hope we're able to see the National Roller Coaster Museum open someday, but it doesn't seem like it'll be anytime soon. Although that's still better than the alternative, which is these pieces of history being sent to a scrapyard. Let me know what you think of this video and of the National Roller Coaster Museum down in the comments below, but please try to be respectful. Like always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.